At some point today, this tank is definitely getting fish. So typically with brand new setups, I like to do lots of water changes within the first few weeks or so. This is a little bit different. It's an ecosystem aquarium, therefore I want the sort of tank to do most of the work. I did one initial water change and since then I've done nothing. So that was nearly a week ago now. Yeah, so here's where we're at. You're probably wondering what on earth this is. So that is the surface skimmer. I was getting quite a lot of scum on the top. I mean, that's just very normal in a new setup. All of this wood leaches organic material and it all tends to collect on the surface. But as you can see now, completely crystal clear. And in my opinion, to be honest, this is the best surface skimmer. This is the Eheim 350, skimmer 350. Eheim Skim 350. This is not sponsored, by the way, guys. It's just a really good product and it's the best one I've found. So I think I should let you guys know. This one's more expensive than your cheap budget ones. But in this case, you really do get what you pay for. So far, look, the tank's looking great. We've got that really good little sort of tint to it. There's no murkiness, but all the good things that happen at the start of a build are happening right now. So let me come down here, for instance, there we go. We've got a little bit of a, uh, not mold, what was I gonna say mold for? <laughs> we've got a little bit of, um, of algae going on that rock. And then some of the rocks over here, we've got a little bit of um, diatom algae as well, which is really good. That basically means, in my opinion, that at this point we can put some fish in, we can put cleaners and we can put the first live bearers hint, hint in there. Now I've actually been breeding my own live bearers and up until very recently, I've only ever been able to breed guppies and endlers. Similar sort of thing, we're not getting into that. But guess what? I've now bred another fish. So recently guys, I've been working quite a lot on the whole racking system you can see here. I've done this tank recently, this tank, this tank, th all of these quite recently. I mean, within the last couple of months, I guess. I'm still working on the shrimp side of things, but all these tanks at the top are now scaped, some better than others. This one's grown right out again. I need to give that a trim back. The rest of them are just like nice and healthy with plants in, you know, and just regular feeding and that sort of thing, but they're gonna be scaped as well. And you guys must have seen in the last build video by now, I did this black water tank. Isn't it looking great? Oh my God, oh, there's the one of the rams, one of the rams, ram alert. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Hello, there we go. That's what you actually look like. Looking so good. That's the male, I think. Ah, there's the female down there. Pretty little thing. She seems to have the pink belly as well, which is great, which means she's probably ready to do some spawning. Please guys, come on, come on. Right, if they can have babies, I mean, I'm away. That'd be great. But I'll tell you what has had babies. That's right, you guys called it first, the platies. So yeah, these are my awesome platies, guys. Look, there you go. Hello, straight away, right on cue. No, not you, these ones. There you go. Tiny little bit, how cute is that? It's like, it's like a miniature version of the adults, which is kind of what babies are, so. <laughs> but literally a mini version of the adults. That's what I think is so cool about it. They are exactly the same. I don't know why I was expecting any different, but that's exactly what we were hoping for, to get the baby. There's more than one, by the way. There you go, there's another one down there. That one's actually less vibrant. So hard to focus on, because they are absolutely tiny. Hang on. Look, that's my finger, and that fish is so small. Just done a water change. There's a little bit of Fred algae going on, but it looks like it's dying, because look, it's all white, which means that the, um, the platies will probably pick it off soon, which will be great. This look though, look at that. That is Ludwigia Super Red growing so, so nice. And what is great as well about this tank, look down here, this is Glossostigma, and it's my favorite carpet and plant. It's just so dainty and cute. Look down here, it's growing into the gravel and spreading everywhere, which is absolutely great. That's what I wanted to see. And many people said it wouldn't happen because it's low tech. This tank is, you know, all it's got is a light and a filter. It doesn't have CO2 or anything like that. It is happening. I've always found that Glossostigma really does love this kind of gravel. Next to my finger, look, you can see the particle sizes. I don't know why, it just grows really well in that. And Aquasol as well, which is about a similar sort of grain size. So yeah, we've got some babies in here, but also up in this tank here, this is where I put my favorite endlers, if you remember. So there's the male snake skin. He's my favorite, I put him in here. There are even more babies now. I've got so many dotted about. If I stay still for a second, we should see a few more. And as I say that, we can't see any. Anyway, there's quite a few babies in this, so I think what I'm gonna do, 
after I've given it a trim up, is take the adults and put them in the new ecosystem tank. Let the babies grow out. Oh, look, there's more coming forward now. They know the tap, by the way, just like all my fish know the tap. The tap means food. So yeah, I think that would be really cool just to have the enders and the platys in there. Um, and then what I can do is just let them breed in there. They'll just generate loads of babies. And then once we've got a few sort of bigger fish, you know, the, the, the system will sort of take care of itself in terms of population. We'll also need to put our cleanup crew in there as well today because it's ready and I've actually got the fish already. And here is that cleanup crew. So I've got three, uh, ancestrous bristlenose plecos. I've got 10 Amano shrimp and I've got 10 Otto Sinclair's catfish in there as well. You guys know the drill. You know that's what I like to do all the time. So they're coming in as well. And I don't know if you guys remember the desktop riparium I did. It's been sat here without a light now for quite a long time. Let me come down. And it's still got all the baby endless in there. I've been um, growing them out. They're doing quite well. I think they're more than big enough now to go in the new aquarium as well. So these are going in the ecosystem aquarium as well. Right, that's enough of a mini update. Let's put the fish in the tank. Like, subscribe. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop the music. Plants uprooted. Replant. Oh, here we go guys, all filled up with water, looking good again. Like I said, I don't want to do too many water changes and I'm not really, am I? That's like, that's the second one in over a week. I normally would have done like seven by now. <laughs> if you're wondering what on earth this is, this is like an alarm thing. I wrapped tape around it because it's way too loud. I don't need it to be as loud as it actually was. And I've just put the little sucker with these little proby things here. Basically, you would put those right on the corner down the bottom here somewhere and then if there was any water on the floor it would set off the alarm but i have now flooded this place about four times from overfilling tanks <laughs> because i always think oh this is taking forever i need to go and do something else and all of a sudden i come back and you'll be surprised when something is level and full of water even just a little bit of overspill makes a massive amount of water on the floor in no time at all. So I got one of these, they're really cheap, just stuck a little suction cup to it, stuck it to the side there, and I have not flooded the studio since. <laughs> Remember, we're on the second floor, so flooding is not a good idea. Right, I've caught everything. You can see them there, looking good. So the uh, bristle noses are actually baby ones, very small, but they grow quickly. 10 Amanos, 10 Otto Sinclis. Some of the Ottos look quite small as well, to be honest, but that's all right. Again, they'll all grow. Okay, let's put these bad boys in. Right, we ready? Here they go. All the temperatures are the same in here, guys, so they're absolutely fine and perfect straight away. And they don't even want to cut. Go, 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 go. <laughs> in you go. Come on. No, you, what, you just want to stay there? Okay, let's, let's just leave it like that then. <laughs> it's one way of getting them all out in their own time, isn't it? Works a treat, oh, there we go. So look at that, already the tank has action, which is awesome. Now the tank, remember, has been set up for like a week now, which means there's absolutely tons of biofilm be already being generated on every single surface. And with such a huge amount of material in the tank, there's plenty in there for this amount of fish. If you've got a brand new setup, it's quite small, but you've already got like a cycled uh, filter or something like that, then you can just put in some algae wafers, things like that, to, just whilst the sort of tank's turning over and getting started. Look at this. You might notice that some of the Amano shrimp have got a slight sort of blue tint to them at the moment. That's what happens when they get stressed. So if you ever see your Amano shrimp going blue in an established aquarium, 
It might be that some of the warp parameters are off, but in this case, it's just obviously because I've just scooped them all out of a bowl and put them into this new aquarium. But they seem to be loving it, if movement is a sign of loving it. <laughs> These guys, absolutely great. Bristle nose plecos, especially the babies, so cute. I mean, I love the adults, don't get me wrong. They're such gentle fish and they're like in, great in every single aquarium. Okay, swim my little fel- where are you gone? There they are, all at the back there, look, you can see them all staying together. Oh, isn't that nice? So, obviously, what? oh, there we go, there's a male. There's a male one. And the other one looks like a sort of mix between a, a regular Enla and, the, I don't know. <laughs> all right, anyway, so these guys here are the ones from this studio. Now, my favorite, favorite Enla that I bred myself, the snakeskin one, is in the other studio with two females, obviously, and I'm leaving the babies in the tank to grow out a little bit more because they're even smaller than the ones in this tank. And then we could put those in here eventually as well. There's gonna be loads of action from tons of little fish. Can you imagine this whole tank here like this, just full of Enlas everywhere? That would look so, so cool. Probably won't happen though, because remember, we are gonna be introducing a predator to the tank at some point, which will possibly, Possibly not pick off a load of the babies, but there's gonna to be tons of places for them all to hide as well, isn't there, to be fair? So that is those guys in looking great. What do you say we go next door and get my snakeskin Enla? Remember, this is my absolute favorite one. I'm really proud of it for some reason. I don't know why, I just am. <laughs> You know what? Sometimes you just have to go for it and just hack everything right back. That's what I've done there. And to be honest, I think it's looking much, much better for it. Do you agree? You just gotta do it sometimes, especially in nano tanks. It, it kills me because it doesn't look natural once it's hacked back, but that doesn't look too bad. I've made sure I haven't cut everything, you know, completely squared off. And I think I've retained some of that sort of natural beauty of this tank. I love it. And now you can see how many enders we've actually got in there. And there's my buddy. There's my favorite. I shouldn't have favorites, should I? but I do, you are my favorite. This is the snakeskin one. Really, really love this, this fish, I don't know why. It must be a good six months old now, that fish. Uh, and the females as well, obviously, still producing lots of babies. There we go, look, she's got, she's got some inside. They're both actually carrying at the moment, so they'll be laying again soon. So that's why they will be absolutely brilliant to be able to put into the new uh, ecosystem aquarium because we're gonna get more babies straight away, pretty much. Look at them, they're ready to pop, to be fair. Yeah, let's do it now. And there we have it guys, the first fish are in. Now, you might be thinking that was it's not, there's not very many there, but we got to start slow with this kind of aquarium. Like I say, I just want everything to take care of itself, eventually, obviously. We, we're gonna have to do this little bit of maintenance to start with, but once you get it like sort of bedded in, is that the right word, bedded in? I don't know. Once you get it sort of going, you can just leave it. And if you just shove in a load of fish at this point, it will really struggle. So we're keeping a small bio load, 
you know it won't be long before these guys are breeding like crazy at some stage soon we're going to be putting our predator fish in as well and all those plants once they sort of growing in a lot more we can up the bio load but for now this is going to work really really well and to be honest i really like small fish in big aquariums i think it looks fantastic i don't know about you guys there's always something going on in one corner or another corner really really fun to look at and just to come and explore another really good thing i did with this tank was build it up to you know the height that it sat at and it means that i don't really have to bend over at all and something about having something at that level just means that it's even more enjoyable i think i'm going to do it more often to be honest but as usual guys i hope you've enjoyed this one if you have click the like and subscribe button maybe go below click the merch link stuff to get you know t-shirts to help support the channel i will see you on the next one Thank you.